morals and ethics. So let's dive into that a little bit more. So morals, the, this was called the moral machine experiment that I just talked about. So morals are, are different than ethics. And morals are usually personally guiding principles internally given. So determined by your belief and habits and convictions. And in the moral machine experiment, they just ask you, what would you believe? Would you spare a cat or a dog or an old person or a young person? Whereas ethics are societal norms and rules. They're often externally given to you. So they are determined by a group or by a culture and by the environment or by a global digital network. So let's, 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 let's talk about that. Well, first of all, morals and ethics, they can also contradict each other. For example, a lawyer who tells the jury that its client is guilty. Now, that might be because out of a moral conviction, the lawyer really, but ethically, by a societal norm, the lawyer is actually paid for and expected to defend the client. But morally, you might say, look, like it's obvious that, you know, that person, that person did it. Now, on the other way around, a whistleblower, for example, ethically might be obligated not to share a secret, that's a societal norm, but morally then feels like, okay, now I, I want to share it. And, you know, there's a contradiction that is not very clear between what is moral, what is ethically correct, what is morally correct, and, and what should be superior, the moral or the ethical aspect of it. And they are co-evolving with each other, same as we collectively then usually update what is ethically acceptable based on our morals. And often their moral contradictions then, then lead, to, lead to interesting social disagreements. For example, one moral question that you can ask people that uh, whether a person is a man or a woman, and if that's determined by the sex that is assigned at birth, or if it's different from the sex assigned at birth. And the population in the United States, the adults disagree on that. Some believe morally that that's that and other believe, no, 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 that's, that, that's not like that. Now, if you have a global reach, imagine you would have a global network that connects three out of eight people on planet Earth, such as Facebook. Facebook just introduced more than 50 different gender options. And you can choose among more than 50 different gender options when you're in Facebook. I actually once did a study that I actually never published, but that showed that that has a very tangible effect, just changing that. And Facebook has a global reach. So what I did in this study, I just asked my students, basically a group of students, I asked them, well, how, what percentage of your friends do you think are not heterosexual? And then they gave me a number, let's say between five and, and 10%. And then I split them in two. Half of them I had to go to Facebook and I made them think it's kind of like a political experiment or something. And the other half I had to look at this, like I had to look at this, this gender setting and really study all the different kinds of genders that Facebook is offering. Then I brought them back together and I asked them both, just the small experiment. And then I asked them both again, so what do you think? What percentage of your friends is not heterosexual? Now the the control group was like, I, I don't know why you're asking again. I just said between five and 10%, nothing changed. The other group that I just had to look at that really increased, augmented significantly their evaluation. They said, oh no, wait, no, what? So many, like pff, way beyond 10%. So it's interesting. You have a lot of ethical reach there also to change things. And this was just, it's just a setting in a social network platform. Now, once you include that in artificial intelligence, you do your AI alignment, how we talked about recently with RLHF, reinforcement learning with human feedback. The question is like, what, what do you optimize for now? And who is in charge of that? Well, right now, who's in charge of that is mainly companies that do that behind a paywall. They do that basically privately and a company per definition must make profit. That's also why companies are almost exclusively the ones who do machine learning nowadays because it's so expensive. They also have the resources. So here you see the cost of, of computation in, in terms of loss in industry and academia. And here you see the percentage of large scale AI results from academia. And you see like after 2010, boom, how it dropped. 
So that means the vast majority of large scale AI results nowadays are produced by private sector companies and hence embedded into the norms and values of private sector companies, they de facto, not de euro, but de facto, these ethics increasingly become the norm. 